Hi everyone, it's Jason here with Accio. Let's take a look at how we can use Accio to diagnose our sales pipeline. Uh, let's say we have a QBR coming up, our sales staff are gonna come in, talk to us about what they have planned, and we wanna take a look at the data that's come in over the past, let's say nine months. So I already have a table. Remember, you can pull in your data from a variety of sources. I already have a ta table that's uploaded, it's right here. Happens to be a CSV because I've worked on it a little bit to make sure it makes sense for this. Now the first thing it asked me to do is to describe the goal of my project. I'm going to tell it I'm a sales leader and we have a QBR coming up. Something simple like that. Now this has 7,000 rows so it's going to take maybe 20 or 30 seconds to generate a number of reports for me. Let's see what it comes up with. There we go. It says it's ready. Let's click on it and see. Ooh, this is, ooh, this is really good. So here's an area plot showing what stage they're in. We have uh, four stages in the sample data, close loss, close one, proposing and negotiating. That makes sense. Maybe this data should be a little more on negotiating and proposing in September, but that's great. <clears throat> this is only stuff that's happened today and, and in the past, nothing that's forecasted. Then we have a histogram of the count and the number of sales going across and the amount, I mean the count and the amount. So that's our distribution. Most of our sales are in the zero to 20K range, which is expected for the product that we have um, in the sample data set. Here's a box plot by each stage as well. Here's uh, each salesperson showing their aggregate sales by each salesperson to see who contributes the most to the total revenue. However, this is likely showing, we wanna create a new report on this. We'll do this in a second. This is likely showing uh, sales are in every single stage. The system doesn't yet know that we're only concerned about closed one. So we can adjust that one. In fact, I can come in here and just simply say delete because I'm not sure that that report is doing uh, exactly what I want. And then finally, we say the total sales over time to visualize the trends. Same sort of thing. This is going to be the total sales opportunity amount in there, but not only closed one. So we could change that, delete it, and we'll regenerate it. But really good generative B, uh, BI reports here uh, to get us started. So I'm not gonna add them to dashboard. I'm gonna keep contributing to this and let's see what else we can do. Uh, before we go any further, let's take a look at our, our, our data set here. We have opportunity ID, create date, close date, stage, sales, and salesperson. Now, we don't have anything about the opportunity itself, the size of the company is at Fortune 500, 100, how many employees do they have, nothing like that in here. We could always pull that in from your CRM or it could be in your data set. Now, my data set's very simple, so it doesn't have that. But one thing I know I'd like to add is just the sales cycle is what I call it. How long does it take to go from create date to close date, right? You created the opportunity, you had your first conversation with them, they became VO, um, visible opportunity or viable opportunity, and then you close them, how long did that take? And we can probably chart that as well for the ones that are closed one or even closed loss. Maybe closed loss were taking longer and then they end up not uh, converting. Let's go to chat data prep and see what we can do. All right. It's a good way to check our data as well. So let's see what it comes up with. I don't have to know any SQL. I don't, don't have to know Python. I just have to know what I want to do. There we go. That looks good. Two days for this one. Yeah, three days. Okay, 354 days. Okay, there's a interesting. This one closed in the future. We closed one, so maybe it's projected or something. We'll say it's sample data. That's okay. I'm going to apply that. Now it goes up to the top, and I can always remove that if I want to. I can always download this data too if I want to at any point. Now, if I look at the distribution of that new column I just created, if I click on that, I see some negative values in here, and that's not okay. That's gonna throw my data off. So I've got, I've got some data issues in here. Let's go and clean that up. The great thing is Accu exposes it to me. I can see it very easily. Um, and I could write this in a few ways. I could say, tell me any rows that have a close date that's before create date. In this case, I'm just gonna say, remove any rows where sales cycle is less than zero. How about that? If it's, you know, if it took zero days, that's okay. But if it took less than zero days, we have a problem with our data. And now it's saying um, 0.9 re removed. So 0.9% <clears throat> of the entire data set probably matches that. I'll hit apply transform. Let's see what we end up with. There we go. It removed a, a few hundred rows, it looks like. And now my distribution of sales cycle looks a lot better. Still got some outliers there. Let's see how many there are. Um, but sometimes our sales cycle is going a little bit longer. So um, we've got the data the way we want. We manipulate it a little bit. I can always clean it up. I can always merge another data set in. I said I could pull in some more values from your CRM or something if I had the opportunity ID attached to some sort of 
um, company name or, or account name inside my CRM. But in this case, let's go ahead and explore. So if I click on explore, it's gonna ask, uh, give me some suggestions based on my data. Show me a scatter plot of sales versus create date. Show me what is the distribution of sales amounts. Now I need to be careful with this because I'm only in this case worried for the most part on closed one deals. That's a sale to me. I may also wanna look at closed lost. I may also wanna look at negotiating, proposal, right? I, I might wanna look at those, but I need to tell it that when I ask this questions. Um, we don't know that closed one is something that's important to us in, in all cases. So in this case, let's do this. Let's say uh, chart the uh, sales by salesperson. Simple as that. So I just add that to the end and say, show only the opportunities that are closed one. Now, if I hadn't done this, um, you would see a very different distribution because there may be some that maybe Jordan's running really hard at um, and has more um, sales opportunities that come in, but more that are closed loss, and that would skew the report. So let's make sure to add that on, and depending on what we want to look at. Let's, let's in fact, let's do the opposite. If I grab this, and I can hit copy there, um, let's say close lost. Ah, and there you go. Um, it actually looks like Jordan Belfort has a pretty high close rate. We should probably look at that. So I'm actually going to hit save to reports. That's going to go as one of my reports that I, I showed you earlier. So you can see we just saved that to the reports. Now I'm going to go back to explore. And let's do this. Let's see what the ratio is between close loss and close one. So now we're telling a story. We're looking at our data and you know, we can have 10, 20, 50 um, salespeople in here. It doesn't matter. And here we go. Ratio of closed one and closed lost opportunities. And, and there we go. You can see it now in the data. This is something that we hadn't explored uh, two, three minutes ago. And now we're seeing that Jordan has a very high uh, closed one ratio compared to the others, which are pretty standard. What's Jordan's secret? What's different about Jordan's opportunities? We could take a look at that. Maybe it's average deal size. Maybe there's a higher number of deals that Jordan is working on. I'm being careful to spell things correctly, but it's okay if you don't. Um, the system figures it out for you pretty easily. Believe me, I spell things wrong all the time. Um, and here we go. Here's the number of opportunities by salesperson. And Jordan has the lowest. Again, we're telling a story here. In my limited experience, um, what I would suggest here that might be the case is that Jordan's far more particular about the opportunities that are put into the CRM. Um, Jordan is more focused on their time and how they're spending it. There might be some lessons there. What Jordan's doing that is, I would argue, a little more successful than, than the others. And the others are maybe following the process and Jordan's doing something outside the norm is something we may want to dive into because um, it's very apparent to me. So we have some things to look at. When we come to the QBR, there's some areas to focus. Now, let's see if we can find out uh, maybe the largest opportunity. There we go, largest. Uh, Jordan doesn't have the largest. What's the average maybe? How about that? Let's see what the average opportunity that's closed one by salesperson. <clears throat> uh, again, nothing really stands out there, right? There's, there's, it's close. It's within reason. Uh, Donnie's slightly lower than the rest, but it's all within a pretty, you know, within 10% of, of each other. Um, so again, very quickly, within a few minutes, we've sliced and diced the data. We have some stuff. I'm going to save a lot of these out <clears throat> and, and save them to reports like I've showed you already. And I'm going to have these charts up ready to talk to the other leaders, maybe my AD, my RD, that sort of thing, to make sure we know what we're going into this, um, we're going into this QBR with. So um, once we've done some an analysis, what we really want to do is, again, I'm a sales leader. I want to predict what's coming because I have to answer in this QBR as well. So let's go to predict. Now, there's a couple things we could do here. Um, we could do a forecast, and that's what I'll do in front of you. We'll see what our data allows us to do, but we could also do a predict. So a predict says in a point of time, what's uh, the total amount that Jason's likely to sell in the quarter or um, how many opportunities is Jason likely to close? That kind of thing is what predict would be. Forecast would be, What's Jason's sales going to be over the next quarter? And I can do that grouping it by salesperson. Let's do that one um, and see what we come up with. So I see here a create date. I'm going to choose close date for my time series. So what's the close date in there? And then I say, what's my ID field? Um, I have opportunity ID. I don't see salesperson in there. I, I really want to group this by salesperson. Let's see what we can do. Let's go back to prepare and take a look. Salesperson right there is a category. I should be able to grab this guy. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm going to choose, um, maybe choose ID field there. Let's see what that says. If I go back to predict, 
and there we go, salesperson. So if I make it an ID field, then I can group it. So it tells me that, of course, you saw that already. Um, <clears throat> it's got to contain five dates to be included in the forecast. So it's, you got to have some data for each salesperson in this case. Now, um, I'm just going to do sales. We'll just do total sales in this case. Data points is going to go out 30% of the data that I have in there. I have nine months. It should go out a month and a half, almost a quarter is what we'll get um, here. So this will be good for what I want. Aggregation. Um, uh, let me try monthly aggregation. We'll see. And then I'll just sum it by month. So let's see. actually, let's try no aggregation. Let's see what it does. So create predictive model. There we go. So again, about 7,000 rows, um, which for four salespeople, that makes sense. I mean, that's, it's nine months worth of data. So you've got, uh, let's say a thousand rows for that's 250 opportunities per month, uh, per salesperson, um, in the system. That's, I think that's pretty reasonable. I think that makes sense. Um, and of course, if you had a hundred salesperson, it would be 75, thousand row it'd be 25 times that whatever that is uh it'd be much higher that's totally okay right that we can totally handle that amount of data no problem at all okay so it still looks like accuracy is within about 18 percent. not awesome but not bad okay and it says our sales forecast is going to be something like this let's see what we got here i think i want to aggregate yeah this doesn't make let's add our aggregation here as monthly i'll sum it let's run it one more time there we go, much better. So we get a 13% accuracy month over month. This is the aggregate for everybody. Let's take a look at what it says. Here's what we had. Here's what's going, it looks like it's going up. Of course, probably what makes sense. If we've ever been in a QBR, you know, it's kind of a little bit of rose colored glasses going on. That's our confidence level, I like that. Now, if we go up here and change this, let's change it to, I think we were picking on Jordan quite a bit. So let's see what Jordan's up to. And Jordan's actually going down. So based on what's happened in the past, because it looks like, and, and I, didn't, I didn't chart this out, but I should go back to explore and look at this. Jordan's actually had a really good um, July and August, right? On an uptick. Started out strong in uh, January, March, and then it's coming to an uptick here when we talk about August and September. So um, it's predicting kind of, a, kind of a, a little bit of a downfall for Jordan. We should look at Jordan's pipeline. We should look at what Jordan is, has been doing and is it, going to continue or is it not the data doesn't lend itself to that but the data doesn't necessarily know what's changed from here to here either so there's some some insight that we might get from the individual or insight that we'd get from knowing the market knowing the industry knowing the patch that jordan's working in that sort of thing let's go back here and change this and just go through what john abbott is doing looks pretty good Mark can't very close. These should be very similar because the three of them were very similar in their data. Very flat and everybody's had an uptick in August. So our new sales campaign, our new garden market strategy, our new marketing campaigns are definitely having a positive effect. Now, I can always download this data set, especially if I go back to aggregate. I can always download this data set. I can put it into another tool and start to do some visualizations on it. Now, these are future looking values. I can actually download this data set, re-upload it right back in Accio and start to work with that data as well. So if I just hit download, it's going to pull it down into my, my sales pipeline here, it looks like. <clears throat> and then I could pull that right back in and start to do um, the same sort of analysis. Now let's look at seasonality. We're looking at by week here. Let's see if I go by day doesn't really make sense because that doesn't make sense. But if we look here, Monday, Tuesday are the biggest days. Okay, that makes sense. And if I look at segmentation, here we go. Greatest growth by value. We have the top and bottom are two different segments. And then sure enough, Donnie and Mark are included and here we go. Uh, it makes sense for both of them are very similar. They have very similar data uh, in the sample data. Now, if I change this down here to do a weekly, let's see what changes. There we go. Accuracy dropped just a little bit. Let's see what our aggregate was. And we see the same thing, a pretty big spike. I don't think weekly makes sense uh, because of the data change that happened in July and August. And I think we can blame Jordan for that. Let's see. Yeah, we got, we got Jordan to blame for that. So a few ways of slicing and dicing the data, taking a look at it. I like monthly, I'm gonna go back to that. I'm gonna try quarterly one more time or one last change and let's see. Yeah, it's, there's not enough of it. So we'll go back to monthly, excuse me. And this is a good data set to work with. So um, again, we can still predict as well. So we can predict at a point in time, what do we think? Um, Jordan's going to have that sort of thing. But I think with this data set, we have that here. We can simply download this data. It gives us our two points. And we say, hey, for the next two months, uh, moving forward, we think that 
um, again, our next two months in this case is August, September, we think that Jordan's going to have, uh, or the aggregate is going to be this value and this value. So at least we have our projecting projection going out. Um, from there, I think what we'd want to do is maybe generate some more reports, go back to explore and look at our insights. Now, one thing that we can do here is I did a bunch of queries here that we were looking at. Any time that I wanted to, I could always share that out and I can share my chat history too. So if you want to collaborate with your team, show them what you're looking at and saying, does this make sense to you? Is this right? Is there something I'm not um, noticing? You can always uh, click chat history, copy, or just open this link and it'll show you how it's going to open up here. There you go. And they can chat with the data as well. Same with our reports, right? If we go to our dashboards, um, let's say I like all of these. I think I filtered them. I like all of these. I hit add to dashboard. And now we can say share this out. We can share this dashboard. We can even give it public access if we want to. So they don't even have to have a login to Accio if they just want to look at the reports themselves. All right, back to our data. That is showing us kind of how to work with your sales pipeline, what you're concerned with. We added some columns. We really explored our data. We found some interesting parts and there are things I honestly didn't know about. Uh, Jordan seems to be a rock star. We gotta figure out their secret. What the heck are they doing that's different than the other team members? That said, I wonder if uh, it can be sustained, hopefully so, because if that's the case, you can see our trend is going upwards through the end of the year. So um, again, if you're working with this, please reach out always you can always click support in the bottom right hand side and chat with somebody live about your data have fun